Health Happens. This is our show we do every Tuesday to give you objective, real health information so you can make some good health choices for yourself. And today we are with Dr. Carol Foster, University of Colorado School of Medicine, and she's an expert on dizziness and she's going to tell us all about vertigo. I did want to tell you too that we were, the last couple weeks we've been off for the holidays, but we did post videos to our Facebook page with our best of 2018 from Health Happens, so be sure to check out those videos. But now let's kind of get into it with Dr. Foster. Um, tell us, she's written this book, Overcoming Positional Vertigo, and it's the most common form of vertigo. And you've written this book, you're viral on YouTube with a video demonstrating how to get rid of this form of vertigo. And this is kind of a maneuver you've developed. But first, for anyone that doesn't know, just tell us what vertigo is. So vertigo is a feeling of intense spinning inside your head when you're not actually moving. And that can come from a lot of different causes, as people know, even drinking too much alcohol, right? That'll make you get a form of vertigo. But the kind we're talking about today is positional vertigo. That's vertigo where you're in bed at night, you go to roll over and suddenly the room spins about 30 seconds, or you sit up out of bed and the room suddenly spins. If you see the room spin when you make a movement, especially if it's around bedtime, it's very likely that you have this positional vertigo. Interesting, so how does it, how does it come on? Uh, well, very suddenly and unexpectedly. What happens is you have crystals in your ear that are used to sense gravity because they're heavy, but they live next to a spinning sensor that doesn't understand what crystals do. And every now and then you'll roll in just the right way in bed or put your head upside down and these crystals will fall into a spinning sensor and suddenly from that point on when you move your head, you'll have vertigo every time. So anyone can get it. I've never experienced it, but you have. I have, and, and as you get older, it becomes more and more common. Is there a way to prevent getting this positional vertigo? Well, uh, if you keep your head upright all the time, the gravity crystals will stay where they belong. But if you put your head upside down, or you lie flat on your back, like doing sit-ups, or you do bench presses or anything, that can put your head in the position that will allow the crystals to fall in. And that can happen when you're in bed at night, just ordinarily in bed rolling over. So you, it's kind of hard to prevent, but if you prop up in bed, you're less likely to get it. Okay, interesting. And I did want to ask you, so if someone has positional vertigo and they go to the doctor, they don't know about this maneuver that you've developed, what is the typical treatment they might receive? So uh, a lot of doctors now know that you can do maneuvers in the clinic. There are special maneuvers for treating this, um, but then you have to wait to see the doctor and you have to get the treatment and not all doctors know how to do that. So. Often you'll just get a medicine for motion sickness that you have to take and gradually over the course of days or weeks this will improve. It doesn't always go away. Right, so this maneuver is more of an immediate thing that you control, you can kind of help and see if that gets rid of the vertigo sensation. And we're going to demonstrate it. Wonderful. So let's yeah. see what this maneuver is all about and you have a special helper that's going to show us this maneuver. So this is my daughter Christina. <laughs> and she's going to uh, demonstrate how to do the maneuver. Okay, great. So you want to get down on the floor there. We're just moving around so you can see it the best. All right, so the first step is to get on your hands and knees on the floor, and then you start by looking straight up at the ceiling. You're going to want to wait in that position for 30 seconds and then put your head completely upside down on the floor. The next step is to turn to face the elbow on the side that has the problem. So if you're more dizzy rolling to the right, you're gonna look at your right elbow. If you're more dizzy rolling to the left in bed, you're gonna look at your left elbow. So in this case, she's gonna look at her left elbow, turn your head there, and she's gonna stay for 30 seconds with the head upside down. The dizziness will occur during this phase. It's normal to feel spinning. Then she's going to quickly raise her head to back level, keeping it turned. It's important to keep it turned toward the bad elbow throughout the rest of the exercise. And then after 30 seconds, she sits fully upright, keeping the head turned. So you need to know which ear is affected, and you can do that when you're in bed, whichever side you rolled to that made you dizzy, or whatever side of bed you got out of that made you dizzy, it's probably that side, and you need to face that elbow during the maneuver. So you normally feel this when you're laying in bed or you've gotten up from bed? Is there another? Lying down too quickly, sitting up too quickly, rolling over in bed. Okay. Sometimes when you tip your head up to look at the ceiling, so there are a variety of positions that can do it, but it's movements in the vertical plane, typically. Okay. So maybe we'll have her demonstrate it again. If it doesn't relieve in the first 
go at it, you can keep doing it, right? Yes, why don't you show the right ear this time? So turn and face that way, and then people can see that you do it to the right. Tip your head straight up, then upside down on the floor, and you keep your head there for 30 seconds for the right ear, looking at the right elbow. Then bring your head up to back level quickly, keeping it turned to the right, and then sit up all the way, keeping the head turned to the right. It's very simple. Yeah, and how often would you say that this works for people? Is it 100% effective if you have this form of vertigo? If if they don't. So every time you do it, you remove some of the crystals. So it depends upon how many crystals you have in there. If you have a lot, you might have to repeat this four or five times to get them all out. But each time you'll get less dizziness. Sometimes you do it and they all go out the first time. So the best thing to do if you wake up with this is to immediately try this and see if you can get rid of it. It only, only takes a few minutes to, to get it cleared out. And then you can just go about your day as if nothing happened. And this is the most common form you said. There are other types of vertigo. How do you know when you have the positional vertigo as opposed to another type and whether or not you should try this? Right, so one of the key things is how long the vertigo lasts. So you see the room spin when you have this. If that spinning is all over in less than a minute, it's probably positional vertigo and you need to use an exercise. But if the spinning goes on and on and no matter what you do and what position you're in, you still see the room spinning, that is much more serious and you should see a doctor for that. So anytime you can't get rid of it quickly with a maneuver, that's an indicator that you need to go in and see somebody to find out what's really going on. Okay. And this has no hearing loss either, no ringing in your ears when it happens. If you have those symptoms, probably it's more serious. Okay, and are we getting any, if you guys have any questions for Dr. Foster, just let us know. Do we have any questions right now yet? Um, so I did want to ask you too, you, you, had vertigo, you're, you have vertigo yourself, you've experienced this. Talk about how this maneuver was developed a little bit. Okay. What, how, how you thought of doing it. So I started having some vertigo due to another ear disease many years ago. And during the course of it, I got positional vertigo in that bad ear. And at that time, there were rumors that there were maneuvers you could do, but they weren't actually published yet. So I just fooled around and made myself do sit-ups, and I finally got rid of it accidentally. But that wasn't this maneuver. Um, and then years later, I started getting it in the other ear. And in the meantime, I had become a balance specialist, and all my patients had vertigo. And I had to deal with how to treat people at home when they got these attacks. I could treat them in the office, but then they would get a recurrence and no, nobody was there to fix them. So I was always thinking, how can you get rid of this at home in an easy way? Well, I woke up with it one morning on my way to clinic. And so I had a few minutes where I couldn't do anything else except try to figure out how to get rid of it. And I did a bunch of maneuvers, made myself sick using other maneuvers, and sat down and said, there must be a better way. And so I worked out, I tried to make a little model of my inner ear with my fingers and figured out, wait a minute, there's, there is an easy way, and I went, went down on the floor and I did the maneuver for the first time, and I was well. Got up, went to work, it was great, and I thought, hey, I wonder if that will work for everybody. And so we started using it, and we did a, a study where we took groups of patients and had them test this versus other kinds of maneuvers, and found out that this was very effective and had very few side effects. And they liked it because it doesn't make you quite as dizzy as the maneuvers I use in the clinic. So that's how it came to be. And you don't have to go to clinic. No copay, you do it at home. Totally, totally free. Yeah. Totally free, that's a good thing. And quick, no wait right. for an appointment. So if you're getting a bunch of these positional vertigo episodes, is that a sign of a more serious problem and you should go see the doctor? Like, Well, I always advise people, if they try to do a maneuver, they think it's positional vertigo, but it keeps coming back and coming back and they can't seem to stop that, that's an indicator that you need additional help. So you should go in and see somebody and find out what's going wrong. Okay. And this position, and this maneuver really just works so well because you are just moving those crystals back to where they're supposed to be. Is that kind of? It's purely mechanical. We're just rotating the head in a, in the shape of the ring the crystals are in and allowing them to fall out. Sort of like those little crystal wands. You can tip them and all the crystals fall to one end. You tip it. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Only it's in your inner ear. So interesting. Yeah. So, 
um, you know, I know you outlined some of this in your new book, and it is, today is the day it's published, it's on Amazon, yes. it's in bookstores, you can find it, today is the day, so congratulations on Thank your book. You. Um, but it, it, I know you outlined this a little bit, but are there, are there any other tips you can give people to prevent getting this? So, as long as your head is upright, you can't really get this back. Once the crystals are out, they stay where they belong when your head is upright. But humans like to sleep flat on their backs, and in that position, it puts the crystals above where the spinning sensor is, so they can just fall in by gravity. And so that's the real problem. If you keep getting it back, you need to keep your head up a little bit all the time. That means in bed, you want to keep your head up at about this angle rather than being flat on your back. When you go to the dentist, you want to have them lower you and then stop when you reach this angle rather than getting your head way down. When you go to the salon, don't let them flip it all the way back into the bowl because you can get a recurrence from that. Right. And just don't get up as fast in the morning to kind of prevent ever Right. Getting... Right. When you so go to like... roll over, lift your head up and roll instead of rolling flat, and that will make you less likely to get it. Nice. And you posted this maneuver on YouTube. You've gone viral on YouTube. I've few million views on, on your YouTube uh, video for this. Is there anything else that you can want to tell people about this or anything else that they can do? As I drop my paper, ignore that. <laughs> um, yes, well, I want them to understand that it sh they shouldn't fear the vertigo. When you do maneuvers, you feel the spinning as the crystals move. Every time they move in that ring that's used to sense spinning, you will feel a spinning and you will even see the environment start to turn. And some people are very afraid of that and don't want to try anything because they think that's so horrible. Yeah. But if you can endure that for only about a minute as you go through this, this whole maneuver, you'll find that it's gone after that. And so you have to learn to not fear it, to immediately do the maneuver, and you can be free of the dizziness right away. Great. Okay, well, if there's not any questions for Dr. Foster, we will post this onto our page. We'll put more details on our blog about how you can get her new book, Overcoming Positional Vertigo, and it has great tips. For anyone that has vertigo and next week on Elf Happens Tuesday on our Facebook page we'll be talking about a wet wrap wet wet wrap therapy it's a tongue twister we'll be talking about wet wrap therapy for atopic dermatitis and eczema and how to relieve kind of some of those dry skin conditions so look out for that next week thank you so much thank you so much for doing thank this you.